Hi everyone, my name is Lisa Snow and welcome to A Conscious Earth. So as many of you know, I have recently started doing the work of Brene Brown and she has a certified course called Dare to Lead. And so right now I am undertaking that course through the organization, The Leadership Sphere. And so I mentioned when I was last participating in the course that I had actually written a piece about being in the arena. And so The Leadership Sphere has actually asked me if I could share that piece. What I have actually found is not only have I have I started to reread um, the work that I wrote a little while ago, but I found myself writing a second blog as well. So I'm going to share with you both of those. I'm going to do them in two separate posts, but I'm going to not only post um, both my blog pieces on my normal page along with sharing with the leadership sphere but I'm also going to do them as a video blog as well and read them out to you. Now, bear with me, reading material is not my forte, but it is it is my words, they are my words, they are my work, and I'm very passionate about the work that I do. So if I start, if I stumble on my words, please bear with me. Like I said, reading, reading's not really my forte. But here we go, this is, this is the first piece that I wrote, um, and I'm often revising my work as well because I, I often find better ways Ways of wording things as we go. So some of you may have read this post once before, but I might have now reworded it somewhat different. This is the first piece and it's a vulnerability piece and it's called The Arena Part 1, Definition of a True Athlete. Definition of a true athlete, someone who wakes up depleted of energy before the day begins, feeling consistently defeated from ailing life conditions such as depression, anxiety, chronic illness, environmental factors, trauma or disease, wishing they didn't have to step into the arena of everyday life but continues to show up anyway no matter how unempathetic, brutal or cruel people and life can be. Once upon a time, I used to be an elite international sports athlete with all the energy in the world until one day I woke up and I was a different type of athlete. The type of athlete who suffered from depression, postnatal depression and many other ailing conditions and symptoms, which back then I had no names or labels for, including anxiety. Unaware at the time that I was chronically unwell, over time I slowly began spiralling out of control and eventually found myself in the arena of chronic illness. It was brutal, non-forgiving and I felt more alone than ever before despite the unconditional love I was receiving from family and friends. When it came to depression and other unnamed ailing symptoms, which I now understand was neurological fatigue amongst other things, people used to ask me, why don't you just take medication? And at one point in time, and a long time ago, I did, but it wasn't without a strong push from family and friends. Everybody thought this was what was best for me because I was no longer being myself. And this was the only way anyone knew how to help or deal with me for that matter. Taking medication, I've now learned, was, I've now learned only ever alleviated my symptoms sometimes, along with alleviating everyone else's discomfort and stress surrounding my spiraling emotions, behavior, and outbursts. Looking back, it appeared I, was taking, I wasn't just taking medication for my own sanity, health and well-being, but I was taking medication for everyone else's too. Hindsight is a wonderful thing though, because what I learned from, what I learned from that particular experience was I actually was being myself despite how everyone else may have felt. And it was my trauma, pain and suffering that was telling me something wasn't right. I just didn't have the tools, skills or knowledge back then to understand what was going on, nor did I know what to do. So popping pills appeared to be my only lifeline at the time. I have no regrets taking medication because it taught me a lot. One of the biggest things I learned, and with no disrespect to anyone who has chosen medication as a path in life for themselves, was for me, it only ever masked my symptoms, suppressed my natural personality, and never actually helped me to address or deal with the underlying and root cause of all the problems, which I now understand started from environmental life stress early in life and was not a chemical in my balance like I was once led to believe. Alongside medication, I had a psychologist at the same time who also helped me to understand some of my lifetime demons, but this method of psychology eventually stopped working for me and there came a point where I needed an entirely new approach with a completely different avenue. 
This was when I discovered integrative medicine, a holistic approach taking into account the physical, psychological, social and spiritual well-being of a person with the aim of using appropriate, safe and evidence-based treatments and therapies. Over time, I slowly, I slowly made the transition. When I first started down the path of integrative medicine, I began moving away from just about everything in the conventional world of medicine. This is not to say it doesn't have its place. I've just now chosen a completely different path for myself in life. In the beginning, I did a phenomenal job at pulling myself out of the trenches of poor health and into a happier and healthier lifestyle. Finally, I was able to cope with the daily grind of life so much easier than before. The only problem was I still felt like a one woman circus compounded by my energy zapped most days. Occasionally, someone might have said to me, but you exercise all the time and eat healthier than just about everybody, so why aren't you fixed? Now that's a good bloody question because not even I knew how to answer that back then. How could I preach health and wellness when mentally I still felt like I was in the loony bin? No matter how much exercise or healthy eating I did, I never understood why my adrenaline ran like a tap all day. But here's the kicker and something that took me years to understand. Put simply, Extraordinary health may heal many things, including chronic illness, but it doesn't necessarily heal a lifetime of anxiety and anchored trauma. It wasn't until I started studying neuroscience along with behavioral and environmental biology that I realized my anxieties are controlled by my subconscious mind and my reactions are expressed based on situational circumstances or experiences. A vital piece of the puzzle arrived this year in 2020 when I began the work of somatic experiencing with a highly qualified and, qualified and trained professional. What I learned very early on in my journey with my specialist is that I have an entire lifetime of accumulated stress and trauma stored in my nervous system and body, much of which has never been released. To explain this in a simpler way, irrespective of what my traumas may currently be or have been, big or small, conscious or subconscious, this means my nervous system is permanently stuck on in a fight or flight response, causing horrendous dysregulation through my entire body. It's as if my physical body it's as if my physical body is subconsciously on guard all the time waiting for the next attack. I'm constantly on edge all of the time looking over my shoulder waiting for the next bombshell to explode and I never get to properly relax. Living a life like this is not, not only extremely exhausting and debilitating but some days just crushes my soul also. You may still ask though as to why I'm not taking medication to manage my anxieties and alleviate my symptoms. For me personally, now that I have a deeper understanding from an integrative perspective as to how my nervous system responds to stress and anxiety, whether I can control it or not, I not only have the support of my somatic experiencing practitioner who is helping me reset my nervous system and reprogram the neural pathways, but I've also thank thankfully found other natural healing modalities that I can do on my own in conjunction with somatic experiencing to help manage my symptoms. Sure, I could take pills like I, like I once used to, but for me, now that I have so much more knowledge in general, this is just not the path I choose for myself anymore. So for now, although I wake up every day knowing that my battery is only ever half full, I work with what I've got even if I work with what I've got even if some days it's not that much. The key is to ensure I keep the awareness keep the awarenesses along the way with continuing other healing practices and modalities. So if you are someone who is struggling or know someone who else who might be struggling, rest assured no one needs to feel alone on this journey we call life and have compassion and empathy for either yourself or someone else who you may know. Many of us show up to the arena every day even if it's hard, grueling and we keep getting knocked down again. We just continue to keep fighting and for that, that's what makes a true athlete. So thank you for listening, everybody. I have written a second piece on this coming from a slightly different place as I'm continuously um, evolving and healing myself also. So I hope you enjoyed and please stay tuned for the next piece that I talk about on this. Bye for now.